box that comes in that LFC kit is the camera. So over here we have this, this is the Logitech Brio camera. And we actually hooked that up to the LFC module and it's hooked up via USB-C. The next box in that larger box that came in the package is the actual LFC control module and we'll open that up and I'll show you what that looks like. And then the last box in that initial um, video that I took was uh, it, this contains all the brackets and um, whatnot to hold the camera down uh, to the projector. So over here we have this. Uh, there are a bunch of different modules with uh, the double-sided uh, tape on there just to make it easier in case you have a permanent design. Uh, with what I'm doing is I've been taking the camera and just moving it on and off the actual projector itself. Um, it does a good job holding it on the projector that I have because most of the time the projector is flat and level. This is the Logitech Brio camera. This is the light form control module. Here is the AC adapter that goes with it. Then the USB-C cable and an HDMI cable. So here's a little bit of a close-up of the actual Lightform LFC controller. So you'll notice right over here, this is the um, control module. And on the side, there are different ports. So there are HDMI ports right over here, uh, four USB uh, ports, as well as this is where the power adapter goes. Um, in fact, I was wrong, I'm sorry. There are actually uh, five USB ports on here. Uh, let's see what else. And then on the side, you'll notice uh, this is where the LAN cables get plugged in, as well as you could put in an SD card. So those are the pretty much the actual ports that are located on this actual Lightform controller. Uh, one more thing, there is a uh, power switch right over here, which enables you to actually power it on and off, as well as toggle between the Lightform there's actually like a pattern and grid that they use to help you focus and determine the scope of what is going to be scanned when it actually does the scan. Uh, and you can also toggle that between an active um, design that you've made and displayed to that uh, display that you know they use for calibration. Okay, so one of the things that actually came in this box was a demo light form uh, poster that they gave me. Um, and this is what we'll use as our demo. I actually haven't used it on this before, so I'll try it for the first time on here. Uh, but there are things where, uh, where you have contrasting colors uh, that make it really easy to um, do kind of, in a sense, the light mapping projection onto this. One of the other things I forgot to mention is this is the projector that I'm using. It's an Epson EF100B laser projector. It's a simple projector that outputs about 2,000 lumens. This version has the ability to change the keystone vertically and horizontally, which is nice. So now I'm going to show you actually how to hook up all these components together. So first of all, uh, we'll have to take the actual Lightform controller uh, and we're going to have to plug in the camera and the HDMI cable to the projector. So let's do that. So I'm going to take the HDMI cable and plug that in. I'm just gonna, I've always used the top one, so I'll use this. So plug that in. Uh, the next thing we may wanna do is take the uh, USB-C cable and we're gonna plug that into the um, top port right over there. I have a feeling you can use any of these ports, but I, again, that is the default port that I happen to choose ever since I purchased this unit. Uh, we also have the um, power in, so I'm gonna take this uh, cord and plug that in to this one on the left all right uh, and then at that moment we can put this down i'm actually going to plug this in on the side i have power on the side of this table okay and this should provide power to this uh, unit right over here uh, the last part is well actually second to last part is taking this logitech brio camera there is a USB port right on the back of here, and we can plug this USB-C right in. I usually keep this light form controller pretty close to the projector itself, right? And once that's on there, I just lay that right on top of the projector, like so. 
Okay, now that I have the camera on top of the projector, I need to connect this to the projector. So this particular one, I can pull the back cover off. Uh, this is what exposes the HDMI connection. Uh, I had an original like Epson uh, TV stick that's there. This is the plug that goes from the LFC into the projector. I'm gonna click that in. All right, uh, and then at this point, all I need to do is I'm gonna power this projector on. This comes on, and you'll probably also notice on the side that the power is on for the LFC. So over here, we actually have the test display pattern that shows up on the wall, uh, and this will actually give me uh, a representation of where the projector can hit in terms of uh, scan. Okay, so the next part takes place on the laptop. So what I've done is I've done a screen record, and I'm going to go to the Light Forum application. So one of the things that it's important is to actually have this on the same uh, Wi-Fi connection. Let's see, sure, we'll send a bug report. I don't remember anything happening, but we'll send that over to Light Forum so that way they can take this um, and improve the software. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it in full screen. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project um, here. And I could make another video on the actual pairing. Okay, so let's see. I may be on a the wrong network. They need to be on the same network. Or I could pair it directly to the um, light form itself. So once I connect uh, with the Wi-Fi, I should be able to connect. Okay, great. Mine happens to be called Mighty Grasshopper. So I'm going to click Continue. All right, and this should actually display an image um, that the camera can see. Uh, and this is using the Logitech camera over here. So my camera uh, or projector it only does 1280 by 800, but I found that sufficient uh, for what I need to do. So I'm going to click the scan button. And what it does is it will start scanning um, and basically project projection mapping a uh, calibration um, grid onto the actual artwork that you want to automate. Okay, so once it finishes the scan, it will actually just say it's processing. So this laptop is not directly uh, connected with the cable into the Lightform controller. Uh, there is that option to do the Ethernet cable. Um, so what this is, is it actually shows me a scan uh, or render of, of what it thinks it has. I know this is kind of like an artifact here, which Actually, that should be solid white, but I think they, they, they put some kind of artifact in there. Now, I am getting some reflection from the outside. However, I think there are a few things I can do, um, you know, with this. Uh, there are things where you can adjust the brightness if you want. You can change the brightness of it. Just, if you notice, you can see some of the differences just to make it a little easier to actually, um, you know, uh, how should I say, fill in where you want to be painted. See this whole filling. So if there's anything that it can't detect, it'll, it'll kind of like generate um, you know, or fill in that particular hole and affect edges. I didn't see anything over there. I haven't played too much with that. Um, but at this point, uh, I'm happy with that. So if you want, we can use this. Uh, for example, they have these tools up here. See, it says pen. There's an one that says rectangle, uh, magic wand. In fact, I'll zoom in here so that way you guys can see it. Um, as well as quick select. Uh, and you can use a brush as well to uh, paint over an area that you want. Uh, and over here it allows you to add text. Uh, these are project assets, so these are things that you may have that you want to project onto a surface. And these library assets, they are a library of um, surfaces that you can add to um, the actual artwork that you need. So I'm going to zoom out. Uh, well, let's, for example, let's try Magic Wand, uh, and over here you can zoom in if you want. Uh, and let's try something. So if I click on here, if you notice it filled in the flower, um, I can fill the flower in right over here by clicking uh, Quick Select. All right, and we'll use that one for example as a surface. So I'm going to go up to here. This is Create Surface. I'm going to click that, 
All right, and that basically makes a um, kind of a map of where it's selecting. If you do need to change anything uh, at all, if you want to change or move any of these points, you should be able to click on them and, and, and move them as well. Oh, so, oh, this is for the fit. I, I, I can move this after. So I can click on this, and if I don't want that there, I can actually move this over here. So this is going to, if you notice, on this side, I'm going to zoom in right here, it says surface. Uh, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a surface by going to library assets up here. I'll click on this. Oops. My apologies. And then over here we see the library assets you know, on the side. So if we actually want to add a, um, let me try uh, this particular effect. I'm going to click insert content. Okay. And then that's where this is what should um, be added as a surface. Um, in order for me to actually see it, I'm going to click publish and it renders this project. Okay, and then once it renders it, it sends it to the actual um, projector. So here, uh, let's see if we can see this uh, via the video. It adds the rendering to the flower, which is pretty cool. It was very fast, very easy to use. All right, let's try to add some other things to this particular picture. All right. If at any point, jumping back to the software, you want to uh, stop this, you can click stop and it'll actually display that test pattern again. So I'm just gonna let that play uh, while we add something. So I'll go up to design if you wanna go back to this. Uh, and we can certainly you know, ch change other things uh, you know, to this picture. So let's see, oh, and on this, uh, you can zoom in, you can zoom out by pinch to zoom. I'm using Mac OS on this, so um, but I'm guessing for Windows, it should be very similar to the software. Let's see, what else can we modify? Uh, let's see, on this one, I have, I have like a little bit of an edge issue. Another thing I wanna show you too is there's a streaming option. So if I click on uh, the stream, uh, this allows me to actively uh, position my cursor over things. Actually, I'm not streaming. Let's see, now I can. Uh, if you look at the video, you can see like if I click on the corner over here, uh, this is actually showing like an X, Y coordinate plot on it. Um, and if I move this to this section over here, you'll see that move live. So if there's anything that is not in the actual display video that the camera picked up, you can always um, use these corners and do them manually, you know, with the pen. So, all right, so I'm gonna shut off streaming for now. Uh, let's actually add uh, another control surface. Let's do magic wand. Um, let's, let's, let's do this other, oops, too much uh, in terms of like likeness. So this is tolerance bar right at the very top. Uh, if I want, occasionally it selects too much. Uh, I could be less selective when I select something. Uh, I'm gonna click on this. Oh, it didn't like that. You know what, I think it's because it's, it's linking that through the whole picture um, through this one of these channels. Let's try, all right, let's try something else then. Uh, let's try this right over here. So we have this. Um, okay. This section is a little bit harder, um, you know, to control. I may add that one manually. Um, I can also deselect things, but let's hit this. I'll just control this for now for the sake of uh, time on this video. We'll say create surface. Um, I'm gonna click done, you know, on this. And uh, let's add another effect. I'm gonna go over here. Um, let's try something else. For example, um, they have uh, things like, you know, if you want it to look like water, I could click that. And then in the background, it should be animated like that. I'll click publish. And in a moment, you'll see those characters are animated and they look like water. I'm going to go back to design. Now, for example, uh, this particular section over here, uh, I could not auto select because it was one, it was bordering on the border of the poster itself. 
So I may actually add, um, using a pen, another surface. So I'm going to click right there. Uh, let's see, you know what, I'm going to turn on streaming so I can actually see my cursor on the actual poster itself. So I'll say, oh, right about there. Okay, there's something. Uh, and we're going to click up here and here as a control surface. And we'll also add water to that just to complete that look. Uh, let's click publish. Okay. So as you see, this is a uh, quick and easy way of uh, animating this poster. Uh, right now is during the daytime, so it may be a little bit harder to see some of the uh, like details on it, but at nighttime it really glows. So again, this is the setup over here. I've just put my light form controller on the side. I have my projector and I just rested the actual uh, Logitech Brio camera right on the top. And this allows me to move things around and use this as a uh, projector. Projector, uh, if I want to use somewhere else in the house to watch a movie. But, you know, for the software and the design, I think um, Lightform did an amazing job. Thank you for designing this, I love it. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. That would help my channel out tremendously. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, Lightform controller content and you learned something from it. Anyways, enjoy.